Bach was a master of polyphonic forms, penning numerous fugues and canons throughout his career. Yet, even the great Bach faced a moment of significant challenge. This happened when he met Frederick the Great of Prussia, himself an accomplished musician. The king presented Bach with a particularly complex musical theme, challenging him to improvise a three-part fugue. The theme, by the way, sounded like this. With his vast experience and skill, Bach managed this with grace and dexterity. Encouraged by this, the king then challenged Bach to improvise a six-part fugue on the same theme, a test that was far more daunting given the complexity and demands of maintaining six independent yet harmonious melodic lines. In this instance, Bach was stumped. He hesitated, tried, but couldn't satisfy himself or the audience. This was uncharacteristic of Bach, whose reputation as a master of improvisation was well known. The incident, some say, left Bach feeling humbled, a rare moment where he confronted the limits of his remarkable improvisational abilities. However, Bach was not one to back down from a musical challenge. Upon his return to Leipzig, he embarked on an intensive exploration of the king's theme. He composed a set of musical pieces, rich with canons and fugues, including a fully realized six-part Reacher the type of fugue he failed to improvise at the king's court. He titled this compilation A Musical Offering and sent it to Frederick as a testament to his ultimate triumph over the challenging theme. A musical offering is more than just a response to a royal challenge. It is a profound exploration of musical symmetry, pattern, and structure. Consider, for example, the crab canon from his musical offering. Yes, you heard that right, a crab, just like the crustacean scuttling on the seafloor. The name might make you chuckle a bit, but let me assure you, the name is hardly reflective of the brilliance behind the piece. Really, it should have been called the stunning masterpiece of ingenuity canon. But I guess that's a bit of a mouthful. Embedded within the musical offering, Bach presents the crab canon as a melodic enigma. Bach simply provided a singular melody, illustrated here, without any clues about where the imitating voices should start. Yet, Bach wasn't entirely heartless in leaving us completely clueless. He cleverly included a tiny hint in the score. He flipped the clef symbol at the end of the score. Now, if sheet music isn't your forte, it's worth noting that this symbol traditionally only shows up at the very beginning of a score, and certainly not at the end, let alone flipped. Feel free to hit pause if you're itching to crack Bach's riddle yourself. The key to unraveling this musical enigma lies in performing the melody in both forward and backward directions simultaneously. The flipped clef symbol is a nudge from Bach suggesting that the performer should consider the last note of the melody as a starting point, just as the first note is the traditional starting point. Let's see what the melody, as notated, sounds like. Na 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 Let's now bring this melody to life in reverse. Na 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 na. All right, you've now heard the melody both ways, forwards and backwards. Prepare for the real aha moment. The genius of Bach's crab canon comes to life when both parts are played together. So now, let's listen to these melodic threads intertwine. Na 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 na. No, 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 no,
If this musical marvel doesn't move you, you might want to check if your heart is still beating. The thought process behind a composition like this is mind-boggling. It's not just about creating a melody that sounds pleasing forwards and backwards. There's an entirely different level of ingenuity in crafting a tune like that. The first note needs to harmonize with the last, the second with the second to last, and so on. Furthermore, the overall harmonic progression must function within the accepted musical rules. Simply contemplating this level of complexity is astonishing, let alone bringing it to life as Bach did. Now, let's look at it mathematically. Imagine for a moment that we're taking a journey through the Crab Cannon in a sort of musical time travel device. At any given moment, we can look both forwards and backwards in time. What we would notice is a fascinating form of symmetry, one that is mirrored along the time axis. This is referred to as retrograde symmetry in the musical world. To put this into a more geometric perspective, if you have a shape and a mirror, the image you see is a reversed version of the shape, just like the melody in Bach's Crab Canon. Now, to understand this in terms of intervals and steps in the melody, consider a simple sequence. Plus two, minus one, plus three, minus two. These numbers denote the steps between notes, with positive indicating ascending intervals and negative for descending ones. When the melody in the Crab Canon is played in reverse and the direction of each interval is flipped, it creates another melody that harmonizes with the original. Of course, Bach's compositions were significantly more sophisticated, but this gives us a glimpse into the mathematical concept of the piece. By having the melody and its retrograde inversion played together, Bach created a harmonious symmetry, an audible manifestation of a fundamentally mathematical concept. The Crab Canon, therefore, isn't just a piece of music, it's an exploration of geometric symmetry in an auditory space.